Hello and welcome to Infinity. There's this thing of clipping layers against masking layers and it's been unclear to me quite some while so I've spent a while digging into it to figure out what's going on. So this is what I have learned. What we've done already before just to go up to date on it is that I go to a recolor here and I'll just put that up to above there and I go to a black and white and that's up there as well. So now what I can do with this is I these are change this but if I drag the recolor onto the icon there the thumbnail then it goes below here and there's a line appears below it and if I drag the black and white onto the name then it goes below that line. So things which get dragged onto the name go below the line things which get dragged onto the icon there, the thumbnail go above the line. If I take the recolor here and drag it onto the name as well, there's no line at all. That's because everything is below the line. They just don't show you that line there. So we've got above the line and below the line. And above the line is the masking and below the line is the clipping. So what is, use is this? So let's right click here and delete these because these it's about a thing called alpha and alpha is simply the technical term for transparency and every pixel has got red green blue and alpha and the transparency how transparent that picture is and go down here and I add a pixel layer above here this is all it starts off completely transparent so you can see through it to the background layer underneath if I pick a paintbrush and I paint on this layer here then I get the green up here which is above this so you see it. And if I drag it below then you don't see it. But what if I drag it now down onto the icon like that and look what happens. It asks like a mask because I can paint more on this and bring more of this picture in. If I drag it onto the text then it acts like it was above but it's actually slightly different and I'll show you how in a moment if I drag that up up to the top there go to the background layer and get an erase brush and I paint across here it's erased the, the background here so you can see through to the checkerboard underneath but the pixel layer is above if that pixel layer was attached to the background then you see this is erased as well because when I erase the background here I also erase that clipped pixel layer. But it's not completely erased, it's still there, I can drag it out again. But that's what we kind of got to. To understand what's really happened, it helps to look at some graphics. So I'm going to do that because graphics work in exactly the same sort of way in the way that it clips. So I'm going to go to File, New, and the image here will start with margins. I don't want margins, so I clip on margins and include, tick that off and then create the layer like this. And this has got no layers at all in so I want to be able to see the background so I go to document and transparent background and now I've got that checkerboard pattern there which shows that I'm looking through nothing. Then I'm going to go to the right uh, click down the shapes here, go to the ellipse tool, hold down the shift key and drag so I get myself a circle and go to the fill I'm going to make that red just so we can see what it is. And in fact, I'm just going to call it a circle. Then I'm going to right -click, click this again, go to the rectangle tool and draw something here. Hold down the shift key and it becomes a square. And I'll change the fill color of that and I'll make that to green. Just like that. And now I've got a green rectangle called green square above here and so it's above it so you can see that layers underneath and if I drag underneath there you can see that the red one is on top which is the way that layers work. A thing to note in this by the way is in any either of these layers it's not just effectively the square you've got here or the circle you effectively in that layer is also everything else in pixel terms is transparent so there's an yeah, the alpha is zero effectively and this becomes important so let's what see if I drag the green square 
onto the red circle there, onto the icon there, the thumbnail, or to the text. So I click, drag onto there, and look what's happened. It's acting like a mask, which is kind of what's happening before. Only now, how does it decide what to look at? Let's open that up again. We've got a green square and a red circle. So the colour is coming from the red circle here, including the transparent bit on the outside, because outside the red circle, on that layer, there is nothing here. So, in other words, it's taking everything from that you see from the red circle, but the mask, effectively, is the green square. And this is working of where there are pixels in that green square, it's on. You can see it, like it's white from a mask. Where there are no pixels on in here, outside, then you can't see it. And so that's like black in a mask. So we get that kind of masking effect here, but with a pixel layer, which you can edit. You can put additional changes onto this as well, which makes it quite useful sometimes. So I put our green square now onto the circle there, onto the text, and now what's happened? Where there are pixels, in other words, the alpha, the transparency, comes from the top layer, the red circle. The colour comes from the green square here, in that it shows where the green square is. And in fact, I can take this and move this around. You can see it's only coming from the, where the green is above there, because outside the green have no pixels on the green layer. And so you can effectively see through it to the red underneath. So they are acting differently, and it's the way they use that transparency. You can then start to play games of right-click on here, go to the Triangle tool, and we want it to appear outside here. So I'm going to go to Select and Deselect Layer, so it appears above. Then I'm going to draw the triangle here, hold down the Shift key, so it's nice and equilateral. And then I'll go to the Fill layer and make that blue. So I'll turn the blue up and the green down. Now then, what happens when I drag it in here? Well, I'm just going to check to make sure. I'm going to put the green one here onto top of the red, so we've got that corner there covered. So that is above the line. Then I'm going to drag the blue down onto the text, so I've got below the line. And what we've got here is, let's call this blue triangle. So we've got the green square here. I can click on that to see where it is. That is constraining what is being seen. The red circle is where that basic original colour comes from. But the blue one here, because it's below the line, we get colour from that as well. So the blue effectively acts like it's above the red. So we've got a fair amount of control in the way things happen here. If I bring the blue up there on top of that, then the blue is now just clipping because you've got two here effectively masking because it's above here if and because there's the line there and if i bring them both onto the text then we've got that effect where it, this is controlled this way this is going to i'm going to do this slightly different i'm going to take out the green square and let's delete that and just put that above for now because i'm going to take this here. Let's take the circle and I'll take this the triangle. I'll just make I'm gonna make the circle bigger. I can hold control shift to make it bigger. And then I'm gonna to go to the blue triangle here. I'm gonna hit control J to duplicate it. And they're both one on top of the other, so I'm gonna drag it down here. And I'm just going to make that one cyan. So I've got two here, I've got a cyan triangle. Now if I take those two there, I can shift click them and drag them both onto the red circle. What happens here is the colour comes from the red circle, but the blue and the cyan are acting like masks. But you've got to have one and the other before anything to show through. So this is like a logical and. What if you wanted to select from the red there, maybe some sort of Christmas tree shape, with all of both those triangles? And the simple way to do that is to force those to become one virtual shape. And that is to group them. So I can arrange there and 
control G uh, forms a group. And this is now masking from the original red circle. So there we go. One more thing I'm going to do here is to show how this is typically used. And you see this done quite a lot, but an important point within that. So for this, I'm just going to delete this and start again here. So I'm going to right click on here, get the rounded rectangle and just draw it down here. And I'm then going to go to stock, search on face and take one of these images and drag this onto here. What happens? Oh, just the image comes in. And because I go to layers, it's now just a separate layer above. But now what if I drag this down onto the icon there and nothing's happened? So I kind of lost that and that's because of the, that effect that this is just controlling the alpha. But if I drag this now onto the rounded rectangle, the rounded rectangle now is controlling the alpha, showing what is being seen. I can go to that image, go to the move tool and adjust it to any way I like and even resize it if I want to. So you see this happening a lot and it's a useful way of clipping in a uh, masking in a, a shape or an image. Another thing that you can do is if I go to that rounded rectangle and go to the stroke, which is the outline here, click on this and turn up the width and look what happens here. It's actually quite tidy. It doesn't try to mask this in any way. It just brings this in at this level here. So the image there, if I increase that, see it crops, it goes into the image. So you, you get to keep that. So if I get rid of that, you can also work on see with the rounded rectangle selected go down to the fx here and i can do things like there that's it so you've got that kind of effect there as well you can also do something like bevel emboss so I turn off the outline turn off bevel emboss make sure i've got it selected and then i can do all kinds of, of things adjusting this to suit and you can do the same with all of these down here so those still work and it kind of makes sense to be able to do that with the shape to give a nice kind of interesting effect anyway that's it that's covered it but do remember that very simple thing and if you're not sure what is controlled by what just get up two shapes different colors drag one on top of the other one across the icon then try doing it across onto the name and look at what is being selected and what. And you should be able to work backwards from that going, ah, oh, that's how it works. And then you can use it in whichever way you want. Anyway, that's it. And thank you very much for watching.